Welcome to the Word of the Lord, the weekly television broadcast of Living Word Christian Church, proclaiming the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Mark Clements' in-depth, relevant biblical teachings will help you in life and living in today's world. Now, let's join Pastor Clements in the service already in progress. Amen. In Exodus chapter 14, you can receive all of the, uh, the preaching, the teaching, uh, the instruction. Uh, you, can, you can do that uh, by requesting a, a, uh, a video of this. I believe they're posted now on our website. Where's our website director? Is that right? You can go back and you can look back into future weeks. We're doing a series on battles in the Bible. Amen. We looked at the first battle in the Bible, which was prior to the human race in heaven. We looked at the first battle on the earth, uh, and that was an individual battle. We looked at the battle in Genesis chapter 14, and that was Abraham and those servants born in his own house and, and, and how they pursued. Uh, we looked at this chapter, Exodus chapter 14, on the people of Israel coming out, and that's really a foundation for several future battles. Uh, and as they came out of Egypt, how they were pursued. Don't think the devil's going to give up easy. Why is it that people, Christian people are surprised when the battle continues on and on and on? And the thing that I was delivered now tries to come back after me and on me. And the thing that I thought I had victory over. Well, you did have victory over, and you do have victory over, and you stand in that victory. As, as, as an enemy continues to try to assault you. We're studying battles in the Bible and the lessons that each of them contain for us. And that battle right there in the Bible contained many lessons for us. Then we moved on to Exodus chapter 17. Turn over there with me. Exodus chapter 17, if you were here Wednesday night. If not, again, you can go right on our website and you can view the entire service. But just a couple of the things. Now, we looked at many things here in Exodus chapter 17. We're not going to re-preach all of this. But just a couple of things. Verse 10, it says, And Joshua did as his leader had instructed him. Moses had instructed him. How, what is that? Verse 9. And Moses said to Joshua, choose out men and go fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said. And we look back at Matthew chapter 8. And the man said, I'm a man under authority. And I say to one, go. And he does what? He goes, and I say to one, come here. And he comes. And I say to another, go do this. And he does it. He does it. He, he doesn't say, well, now listen real carefully. Listen real carefully. He doesn't say, I'll consider it when it's convenient for me. I'll do it when I can fit it into my schedule. Now that's going to be real important in a few minutes. So, 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 so pay attention to that. That is not what Joshua did. That is not what, that is not what uh, uh, Matthew chapter 8 tells us. When we receive instruction, we receive orders, here he received the, the Lord's direction. Well, I thought Moses spoke to him. Y you're right, Moses spoke to him. As I said, he received the Lord's direction. Go and fight against Amalek. Now, Moses did not go down and fight with him. It says, and I will go up to the mountaintop. It came to pass that Mo Moses and Aaron and her, they went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass, as Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed and was victorious. When he let down his hand, uh, Amalek prevailed. And his hands were heavy. Verse 12, And Aaron and Hur took a stone, let him sit on it. And they held up his hands on either side. And Joshua discomfited or defeated Amalek with the edge of the sword. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and I'm not going to turn there. This is just an opportunity for you to study your Bible. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting with verse 12, all the way down through verse 28, where we find the ministry of helps. All the way down through there, it talks about the church, and it specifies the local church, and it specifies it's like a human body. And it uses some examples of the hand and the foot. And it uses the examples of the eye and the ear. Do your eyes and your ear have the same function? No, not at all. Your mouth 
uh, and 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 your your the vertebrae of your spinal column. They, they serve totally different functions. Your internal organs each have a part to play, and the Bible says that's the way the local church is. That you have you have certain positions, and you have certain people filling those positions, and they serve in those positions, and there should never be competition between them because the eye doesn't hear very well. And the ear doesn't see very well. And the mouth has no sense of smell at all. But your nose does. And your jawbone and that joint cannot function as your knee or ankle joint does. You've got 206 bones in your body. Every one of them have a, have a certain function. Muscle groups and ligaments and cartilages. And it goes all the way down through the body. And it says God has placed the body together and given everyone a function. That's what our Bible says. Everyone in the local church has a place to serve and has a function. But they're not all the same. Romans chapter 12, starting with verse 4, says the same thing. It says we have different offices, different positions, different places to serve. I am so glad we have children's ministry staff. Yes. Now, I could get up and I can sing that song. I have decided. It's one of my favorite songs from childhood. I mean, I like verse number 2. Though none go with me. Still I will follow. I can't sing near as high as he did, by the way. <laughs> and, and, and I like the third verse. Cross. The cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me. No turning back. No turning back. See, I love that, but I can't play the guitar and hop. <laughs> I sure enough can't play the guitar. And, and, and hopping days are about gone. <laughs> I'm so glad that there are people in the church that, 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 that have giftings and callings and the hand of God upon their life and are anointed. And never once was there any competition. Moses said, Joshua, you go and you pick out some people to help you and you go down to the valley floor and engage Amalek in combat. I will go to the hilltop. All right, Moses, you want us to do all the... There was none of that. It was just the understanding that we need Moses up there doing what he's doing, and that's holding up the rod of God and holding up... We need people close to him. I never get to be close to the pastor. I'd put a nicer rock under him if it was me. I think I'm a great holder up to the hands. Yeah, but Joshua picked you, and, and you're one of the combatants, and, and, and everybody has their part. That's, that's the great lesson here. There's no competition. There's no one person more important than the others. Moses could have went up there and held up his hands all day. Nothing would have happened down on the valley floor without people down there to engage. Nothing would have happened down there on the valley floor without a leader to take them into the engagement. Everyone's part was necessary. Moses would have gotten tired up there on the hillside, even with Joshua and the soldiers on the valley floor and Moses on there. He'd have got tired and wore out, and his hands would have fallen, and they'd have been defeated if it wouldn't have been for Aaron and her. Yeah. Everyone has their part. Your part is important. Don't ever underestimate the value of what you do for the kingdom of God. And the one single institution that he is building on this earth during this age, and that's the church. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right. Turn with me in your Bibles over to Deuteronomy. Say it fast. Deuteronomy chapter 1. One of your favorite battles in the Bible. And it actually took place earlier. And if you remember, Deuteronomy means the rehearsing of or the second reporting of. And Deuteronomy's already, already been lived out. The law has already been given. The book of Numbers has already passed. And he's going back now in Deuteronomy chapter 1. And he's referencing a battle that took place. It's one of the most important battles for you and I as a Christian in the whole Bible. Let's start. Deuteronomy chapter 1, and we're going to, for time's sake, <coughs> we're going to read verses 19 through 21. And when we departed from Horeb, 
Mount Horb, we went through all the great and terrible wilderness which you saw by the way of the mountain of the Amorites, as the Lord our God commanded us, and we came to Kadesh Barnea. And I said to you, you are come unto the mountain of the Amorites, which the Lord our God doth give unto us. Behold, the Lord your God has set the land before you. Go up and possess it. As the Lord God of your fathers has said to you, Fear not, neither be discouraged. Now this is pretty, pretty simple stuff. This is their leader standing up, and they came to this great mountain, and, and, and this territory was before them, and he stood up, and he said, this is what the Lord has said. They set this land before you. Go up and possess it. The Lord your God, the God of your fathers, has said, fear not, and do not be discouraged. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we just read in our Bible, and they did as they were commanded? Wouldn't it be wonderful if they did the same thing that Joshua did? Wouldn't it be just wonderful if they could read Matthew chapter 8 and see what a man under authority really does? And wouldn't that be wonderful? But we have to go down and read verse 26. We're going to skip over a couple of verses, not because we don't want to read them, but just for time's sake. And notice verse 26. Notwithstanding, you would not... Now Moses said, here's what the Lord wants us to do, and here's what you should do, and let's go up and let's take the mountain. The Amalekites are there, the Amorites are there, and, and, and it's their territory, but the Lord gives it to us. Go forward without fear and don't rebel. Don't be discouraged. But you would not. But you rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. Just because something is God's will, every human has a will. And you can know the will of God, you can rehearse the will of God, you can memorize the will of God, you can be totally illuminated to what the will of God is. That does not mean you're doing it. Joshua did the will of God. Joshua led a company into combat. Joshua had God's help in that combat because Moses was up on the mountainside and they won a great victory. These people when Moses spoke to them and said, charge the mountain, God has given you the land, do not fear and do not be discouraged, they would not go. Not they could not go. Doesn't say they lacked the ability or the means. Doesn't say they lacked the strength or the armament. Doesn't say they lacked the training. Doesn't say they could not go. It said they would not go. They would, now watch this, they would not go. They rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. Should we keep reading? Yes. And they murmured in their tents, and they said, Because the Lord hates us, He's brought us out of Egypt only to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites. How dumb is that? Yes. It must be because the Lord hates us. God hates me. Oh, come on. And, and you murmured in your tents. That, that in the margin of my Bible, that means complained. Must be because the Lord hates us that he brought us out of Egypt to deliver us to die here. Huh. All right. Verse 28. Whither shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying, The people are greater and taller than we are. The cities are great and walled up to heaven. Moreover, we've seen the sons of Anakin there. Then I said to you, do not dread, neither be afraid of them. The Lord your God, which goes before you, he will fight for you according to all he did when he brought you out of Egypt and in the wilderness where you have seen how the Lord your God carried you as a man carries his son in all the way that you went and you, until you came to this place. Yet in this thing, you did not believe the Lord your God. You didn't believe God. Who went in the way before you to search you out a place to, to pitch your tents by fire at night to show you what way to go and a cloud by day. And the Lord heard the voice of your words and was angered at you. 
and swore and said, Surely there is not one of these men of this generation that will see the land that I swore to give your fathers, save Caleb, son of Jephunneh. He shall see it. To him I will give the land which he's walked upon, and to his children, because they have totally, fully, and completely obeyed my voice. What it says in the margin of my Bible. They fully obeyed me and followed me. Also the Lord was angry with me for your sake, and said, You'll not come in, but Joshua, son of Nun, who stands before you, he shall go in, encourage him, strengthen him, for he will cause Israel to inherit it. Your little ones will go in. Verse 40, But as for you... Turn and take the journey by the wilderness and by the Red Sea. Everybody tell me in verse 41, what is the next word? Come on, with enthusiasm. Then, Then, see the Lord told them what to do and the Lord told them how to do it. And the Lord gave them commandment through Moses to charge this mountain and take this land and they wouldn't go. And they said, no, 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 we don't think we can do that. And they obeyed. Remember the 12 spies went in and 10 of them came back and said, you can't, except Joshua and Caleb said, you can. That's why he said, they're going to go in. And so Moses stood up and said, you rebelled against the Lord and you wouldn't do what he told you to do. You doubted him. You became discouraged. You were fearful. And then, oh, the light bulb went on. Then, now watch this, watch this. Then, now they're going to decide that it's okay. Now they're going to okay, now they're going to obey God. Now they're going to trust God. Watch. You ready? Then, you answered and said, We have sinned against the Lord. We will go up and fight. According to all the Lord our God has commanded us, And they girded themselves on each their weapons of war, and they were ready to charge the hill. And the Lord said to me, go speak to them and say, do not go up to fight, for I am not among you, lest you shall be defeated by your enemies. So I speak to you, but you would not listen. It kind of sounds familiar, doesn't it? See? See? They wouldn't listen to God. They wouldn't listen to Moses. They wouldn't listen when he said, go up. So they're not going to listen when he says, don't go up. And I spoke to you, but you would not listen. You rebelled against the commandment of the Lord, and you went presumptuously up the hill. And the Amorites, which dwelt in that mountain, came out against you and chased you, as hornets do, and destroyed you, even in Seir unto Hormah. And you returned and wept before the Lord, but the Lord would not hearken to your voice, nor give ear to your prayers. So you abode in Kadesh for many days. How many of you, this was one of the battles in the Bible you were looking forward to? Uh This is one of the battles in the Bible. And it's an exceptionally, exceedingly important battle for you and I to glean the precepts and to glean the principles from that will assist us and help us in being, being so carnal and being so arrogant and being so discouraged and offended and full of fear that we make the same mistakes. So share with us, share with us, Lord, help me, Pastor. What are the principles in these particular verses and in this battle in the Bible before we go on to the next one, before we go on and see the, uh, the, next, the next battle in the Bible. First of all, he says, and it's all throughout the Bible, as a matter of fact, it's found 365 times in your Bible. What's the phrase? Fear not. 365 times. One for every day of the year, your Bible will tell you to fear not. Fear not. Do not be dismayed. Do not be discouraged. One of my favorite places is Joshua, the very first chapter. Joshua chapter 1. Fear not, neither be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you. Put your trust and faith and hope and confidence in your God, not in your enemies. Who's bigger? Fear is an evident token of perdition, the book of Philippians says. It means we're in sin. It means we don't have enough confidence in God. It means we're not obeying Him. It means we know we're out of fellowship with Him. We need not fear our enemies. We serve the great God, the mighty God, the awesome God, the most high God. 
and, and, and he said, you go and your God will be with you. But they would not. But they would not. Notice that you have, even when you hear the will of God. Number two, notice that you have the opportunity, but you have the awesome responsibility to then do what you know the will of God to be. You can hear the word of God. You can hear it every Sunday. You can hear it every Wednesday. You can turn the tape on. You can get on the, 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 the CD or the DVD. You can go on the website. You can read your Bible. You can study it for yourself. You can know the will of God. But there's a difference between hearing it and knowing it and doing it. They knew what the Lord wanted them to do. And it says, but you would not. But you would not. Number three, you are not in charge. Number three, you cannot operate on your own timetable when it comes to the Lord giving you instruction that is time sensitive. If the Lord says, do it, I can't say, uh, Lord, uh, when I get around to it, that's what they said. When I feel like it, that's what they said. When it's convenient for me, that's what they said. And when they got to where they felt like doing it, then they went ahead and said, okay, we'll go into battle now. And what did the Lord say? You better not, because I'm not with you anymore now. I told you to do it. You rebelled against me. See, I hear all this stuff about, well, isn't it wonderful that God is a God of second chances? You ought to tell that to these folks right here. They didn't get a second chance. They got an opportunity to obey God. They got an opportunity to win a great, great victory. They got an opportunity to see his might and power manifested on their behalf, and they put him off. You don't put God off. Well, you do, but at your own peril. You can if you so choose to, but it may very well be. Not only did God say, no, 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 I told you to go yesterday. I told you to witness to that person two days ago. I, 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 I told you to give that offering last week. I didn't tell you to do it this week. See, you're not in charge. You, you, don't, you don't put God off, and you don't tell, push the pause button on him and, and say, I, I, I'll do it when I feel like it. You, your own God, sitting up there on the throne of your life, and do it when it pleases you. That's what they did. That's what they did. Now, now, I hope I'm helping you today. You can do that. I mean, f face it, you can rebel against God. You can say, I won't. You can say that if you want to. But then later on, when the defeat, when it's raining down on your head and your enemies are chasing you like a, like a, like a hornet, like a nest of hornets, and then you cry out to God, you know what your Bible just told you about the unchanging God? He's not going to answer you. And he's not even going to listen to your prayer. Mm-hmm. Whoever said, wow, you and me, because I've been studying this for weeks and weeks, and I still can't get over the wow. No, no, if you do, the Lord is under no obligation to help you, nor listen to your prayer. Let, let, let's look at a couple of scriptures before we go. That all right? Yeah. We are in church, right? Yeah. See, let's look at a couple of scriptures about, about putting God off, putting our God off, putting our Lord off. All right? The children's ministry had us in 1 Kings chapter 18. Let's look at 1 Kings 19. In 1 Kings chapter 19, and you may just want to write these down and just study those, these on your own later. In 1 Kings chapter 19, this is after that same Elijah. Remember Elijah, the prophet? And she, she, she spoke about him. Uh, he, 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 has this, he has this conversation with the Lord. And the Lord says to him, 1 Kings 19 verse 15, Go and return on the way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you come, anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. And Jehu, son of Nimshi, shall you anoint to be king over Israel. 
And Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel Mahola, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. So he's told, go, go anoint two people as kings and then go anoint your successor. And it shall come to pass that he that escapes the sword of Hazael shall Jehu slay. He that escapes the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. And I have left to me 7,000 Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, every mouth which has not kissed him. So he departed from there, and he found Elisha. Remember who Elisha is? He's going to be the next prophet. He's going to be the person who for the next 20 years is going to minister to and serve Elijah. And he's going to then take his place and have a double portion of his anointing. And so he goes and he finds him, and he's a farm kid. He's working out in the field. He's plowing with the oxen. And he departs and he founds Elisha, son of Shaphat. He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen and him with the 12th. And Elijah went by and cast his mantle on him. What is that significant of? That's the call of God. He takes the prophet's mantle and he throws it on Elisha. And Elisha left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray, go and kiss my father and mother. Then, remember I had you circle that word, underline that? Then I will follow you. And Elijah said, just go on back there. Just go on back to plowing. You don't have a clue what I just did. And walked away. Well, you know the rest of the story is written right there. Uh, Eli Elisha came to himself right away. He went back and hacked the oxen up and broke up the plows, started a fire, threw them on top, said, enjoy the barbecue. And he took off and ran after the man of God and followed him. Say, well, that's one example in the Bible. Well, let's read a couple more. Uh, Luke chapter 9, if you would, please. Luke chapter 9. Putting God off. Can I just tell God what I'll do and when I'll do it and when it's okay with me and when I approve and when I have time? Can I do that? Well, you can, I guess. You can do anything. Luke chapter 9, I wouldn't recommend it though. Luke chapter 9, verse 57. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man came to him and said, Lord, I'll follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests. The Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. You say, wow, Pastor, it almost sounds like he's trying to talk the guy out of it. No, he's just giving him a very real evaluation of what ministry and becoming a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ is really going to be like. It's going to be sacrifice. It's not going to be comfort. It's going to be difficult and challenging. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be time-consuming and cost you and demand resources and energy and a focus and attention. And it'll take everything you have. Now, if you still want to follow, but we don't have any indication the man ever even answered him after that. The next person said, he said, follow me, follow me. But the man said, Lord, allow me first to go and bury my father. And Jesus said, well, yes, I'm very understanding of your schedule and all the events and activities of your life and how important those things are and that they're actually more important than following me, serving me, and obeying me. I understand. I'll wait for you to get back. Is that what he said? He said, let the dead bury their dead. You go preach the kingdom of God. Wow. That's just not the Jesus I know. You ought to get to know the Jesus of the Bible then. Verse 61. Another said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first. See, the Lord's coming last if I make anything else first. First, let me go and bid farewell to those who are in my house. Jesus said, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. So, well, those are good Bible examples, Pastor. I'm sure they're not relatable to, to our lifetime. 
Thank you for watching today's telecast. It is certainly my privilege and honor to come to you each week to bring practical and powerful truths to you from God's Word. I'd like to say thank you also to those of you that have sent messages and notes to the ministry, letting me know that this broadcast has been a blessing to you. And finally, I'd like to thank each of you that send donations to help us continue broadcasting this program. We appreciate your support and your partnership. For those of you that would be interested in becoming a partner with us, I've recently prepared a special message entitled, The Power of Partnership, that we'll be sending to each person that requests a copy. Simply use the information displayed at the bottom of your screen to order a complimentary CD or DVD. Now, let's get back to today's message and thank you again for watching this broadcast of The Word of the Lord. I could tell you the story of a, a very successful businessman. I could tell you his name. I could tell you where he lived. I could tell you that he was exceptionally wealthy and his business was extremely successful. He made a lot of money. And the Lord called him into full-time ministry and spoke to him. And he came to his pastor and, 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 and said, the Lord spoke to me. He spoke to me in a dream that I was to go to Bible school for two years and then he would be utilizing me in full-time ministry. And he said, then why are you talking to me? Go. He said, you don't understand. He said, I have to work two more years to vest my retirement. I have to work two more years. The Lord will have to wait. The Lord will have to wait for me to vest my retirement and make all of that extra money. And of course, you can spiritualize it, can't you? Well, just think how much more he'd have for the minute. You don't put God off. He did. He did, of course. And within a year, he got mixed up with one of his secretaries, had an affair, broke up his marriage, lost his family, lost his health, and eventually lost his entire business. Now, I imagine maybe if he came to himself, he'd have went running back and saying, Lord, I sinned, now I'll go into the ministry. And maybe the Lord would have just ignored his plea and not listened to his prayer. That would be consistent with the character revealed to us of God in his word. I didn't know her, but I can, I can, I can rehearse from a minister that I do know who traveled in ministry, ministered in churches just like this one. And, and he would always pray for the sick at the close of his services. And one particular lady, she was the Sunday school superintendent of that church. She was 80 years old. She would come to the altar and she would ask for prayer every time he was there. He traveled to that church. He was there at least annually, sometimes twice a year. And every time she would come and she'd say, I'm back again. You know the condition that I have. It's not a terminal condition. It's just a chronic condition. I've had it my whole life, and I just want you to pray for me. It's not going not to kill me. It's just a chronic condition, and I'd like prayer for it. I'm still believing to get my healing. And he'd pray for her until one day after he had prayed for her, he said he'd lost count a number of times. And he went back and he prayed. And he just started talking to the Lord. He just started crying out to Jesus. He just started pleading her case and interceding for her. And he just started saying, Lord, there's not a more faithful Christian than I know. There's not a better example of Christian servanthood and service and faithfulness and dedication to you that I know. This woman has been a Sunday school teacher her whole life, Sunday school superintendent, loves all of those children, 
She goes and visits them in their homes. She has activities for them during the week. She prays for every single one of them by name. Now there are people that have grown up and part of that church, and now their children she's taking care of. Now she's the Sunday school superintendent. Lord, if there's anybody anywhere that you should just have mercy on and heal, before she comes on to heaven to be with you, it would be this lady. He said the Lord spoke to him and said, what you can see is all on the outside, and what you can observe is all the appearance in the natural realm. What you can't see is that when she was 19 years old, at the end of summer camp, her senior year of high school, I called her to the mission field, and she told me no. And she has lived with the dark blotch of disobedience on her life all the rest of her life. You see a great servant. I see a disobedient Christian. She's never obeyed me. You know what the sad part of that is? That at 80 years old, she could then go to God and say, okay, I'm ready now. And it'd be too late. You don't put God off. You don't tell him no. You don't put him on your timetable and act like you're God and he's your servant and you're in charge. That's the lesson of this battle in the Bible. And it's a pretty significant one, I think, and a pretty serious one, uh, if, if, if you were to ask me. No, no, God is God, and, 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 and I'm his servant, and I'm his servant. And he can give the orders, and he can give the commands, and that includes everything that's instructed of us in our Bible, like forgive. Well, I'm just not ready to forgive him yet. Where do you read in your Bible anything about getting ready to forgive? I haven't started tithing yet. I'm working my way up to it. What does that mean? I, I don't know. I mean, that was, that was shared with me as a pastor. You obeying God yet? No, but I'm, I'm getting closer all the time. How about I just do what he says? How about when my Bible says be in church, I actually am? Or do I put him on my schedule? Pastor, you, you, you were doing really well until about a minute ago there. And, 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 and then, see, I'll love my wife if she. Well, he didn't say if she anything. He didn't say if me anything. Well, I'll submit to my husband once he starts loving me. Where do you read that? You're telling God what conditions he has to meet before you'll do what he says. I'm not looking at anybody. Where's my sunglasses? No, no. This is, this is imperative for me as a believer, me as a Christian, you as a Christian, our children as, as young Christians and growing up. For us to see, there's a battle in the Bible, and it couldn't even be any clearer, could it? They told him no. And then later on, they came back and said, okay, we're ready now. And he said, don't go. And they did anyway. And they were soundly defeated. Don't ever put God off. Don't ever put God off. Whatever he says to you in his word, do it. Do it instantly. Do it immediately. And do it with all your heart. He's not on my timetable. It's not up to me to determine when to and when not to. It's up to me to allow Lord to be Lord and to obey him fully and completely. Take your Bible. Take your Bible. Take a deep breath. Say, I made it. I made it. I made it through another battle in the Bible lesson. Turn to Deuteronomy, because there's another battle here, uh, and, and, and really it's instruction about battle. And, and we'll, we'll take this up Wednesday, but we'll just, we'll just, it's a real short one, really. And, and if you want to title it, it's all about rank. It's all about rank. Deuteronomy chapter 20, 
verses 1 through 9. And, 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 and you go ahead and look at it. You go ahead and study it, maybe as a couple, with your kids, <laughs> by yourself. Go ahead and, and look through that on Wednesday night. This is where we're going to study the Bible, and we're going to take this up together. It talks about rank. Find the different ranks in these particular scriptures. There's five of them. We'll bring the whiteboard out, and we'll, we'll talk about these. We'll go back into the Chronicles, where it talks about David choosing his armada, choosing his army. You know, one of the criteria was they had to be able to follow rank. That doesn't mean march in step. Okay, we'll, we'll look at it and, and we'll study it. Then we get to get out of Deuteronomy and we get to some of our favorite battles in the whole Bible, Jericho. Joshua chapter 1, 1 through 6. The one thing I see about Jericho, though, is chapter 7. And they won a great victory in Jericho, and then they were defeated by little bitty Ai. Sometimes it's not the great big battles that you fight. You stand, and you sweat, and you swing, and you confess, and you pray, and you intercede, and you fast, and you pray some more, and fast some more, and stay up late at night, and command evil forces away, and stand before heaven, and you win that one, and then it's just the smallest thing that comes in right after that, and, and, and that's a great lesson in that battle of Jericho, followed by the defeat at a little bitty place called Ai. So we've got a number of other battles in the Bible. I hope this has helped you today. I hope it, I, I know it will when you accept it and when you receive it. Uh, I hope it was challenging because I didn't want to be the only one after studying this for weeks and weeks and weeks uh, and, and looking back and saying, oh God, oh God. Oh, oh my God. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching The Word of the Lord, a weekly television broadcast of Living Word Christian Church. Living Word Christian Church welcomes you to join us at 2015 Ward Avenue in La Crosse, Wisconsin, Sunday mornings at 815 and 1030, and Wednesday evenings at 7. For more information on Living Word Christian Church, visit us on the web at lwcclax.com.